welcome or welcome back to my channel but probably welcome because you know Anyway, I think you're going to really like what I've got for you today. I picked up an Atari 2600 recently, and I wanted to do something really special with it. A lot of the old games are still really fun, but not all of them have stood up to the test of time. Oh, come on! Not again! So I decided not to make a game. But the graphics of the 2600 are so distinctive and so charming that they'd be nice to look at throughout the day, I thought. So instead of making a game, I made art. Well, maybe not quite like that, but I did make a digital photo frame for displaying your family pictures at home. But before I could do that, I had to get this unit working. I bought it from eBay in untested condition which of course means it definitely doesn't work, but the seller didn't want to tell me that and charge less. Uh, so the symptom it was having was that the left controller port didn't work, which is a big deal because that's player one. So you can't do much with it without controller port one. But after poking around inside, I found it was just a few broken pins, which is pretty common on these older units. Um, so a little bit of soldering, a few jumper wires, and I had a fully functional Atari 2600 from 1983. Yes! So with everything working, it was back to the digital photo frame. There is a problem though. The stock Atari 2600 cartridge can only hold four kilobytes of data. Even with bank switching, I'm not aware of any examples with more than 64 kilobytes of data, and it's a lot of monkeying around to switch between those different memory blocks. That is a big problem when you're trying to display photos. You can't fit very many in there. I'm going to need a lot more space. But how do I get it working? Ah, I've got it! The Pico Tari! It is a Raspberry Pi Pico on a custom circuit board with edge connectors that interface with the cartridge port of the Atari 2600 and some supporting hardware to put it on the address and data buses of the Atari when it's appropriate. So I'm using it mostly as a ROM emulator. So when the Atari requests an address, it gives data. But since there's modern hardware on here, it can do more than just that. In general, when the Atari requests an address from the Pico Atari, it simply looks to the ROM, finds the data stored at that address, and returns it. It'll return the same thing every time, of course, and that's where the main program is stored in that ROM area. But there's also this special address, and I use this special address to store data for images. So this one works just a little bit different. So when this is requested, the Pico Atari knows to look to a special extended storage area, grab that byte, and return it all the way back to the Atari. But the interesting thing about this one is that the next time the Pico Atari requests that same address in ROM, that same single byte, it's going to look to the next byte sequentially in the extended storage area. And it's going to do that uh, continually. It's going to always move to the next byte. So in that way, by looking at this single byte, you can grab the pixels for an image in sequence, something like this, without ever taking up more than a single byte in the Atari's ROM space. But even with the Pico Atari, drawing a bitmap on the 2600 is anything but straightforward. It was just never meant to do that. But fortunately, there is a pretty well-known 48 pixel routine that allows you to just barely draw 48 consecutive pixels on a single scan line. It does this by some tricks with the player one and player zero sprites. Uh, they're duplicated a couple times each, and with just the right clock cycle precision, 
you can barely update them before they're drawn to the screen to get 48 consecutive pixels. Now I want it to be a little bit larger, so I did that trick on one frame, and then on the next frame I drew, I drew 16 more, so it just alternates from one frame to the next, so you effectively get a 64 pixel wide image. I chose to go with 80, 84 pixels high. You can actually go up to 192 pixels, I just didn't like that aspect ratio, so I shortened it up a bit, but there's actually no limitation there. The final step in the project involved preparing images for display on the Pico Tari. So I did this by using a utility called Pixelit, which sort of 8-bitifies your images. And then from there, I did a little bit of touch-up in GIMP because Pixelit's not quite perfect. And once that's done, I use a Python script that creates a data structure from that modified image that the Pico Tari can understand. Once that data structure is flashed to the Pico Tari along with its other code, it can then be plugged into the Atari just like any other cartridge. It's completely self-contained. It draws its power from the Atari itself as well. So you just plug it in and turn it on. That's all there is to it. As it's presently coded, the Pico Atari is going to cycle through its images about one every 30 seconds. But of course you can change that. In fact, you can make it do about whatever you want. I was thinking myself about maybe making something like a Game Boy camera for the Atari 2600. What do you guys think of that? Does it sound like a good idea or do you have any better ideas? I'd certainly like to hear about it in the comments. If there's a lot of interest, I might even make it. And if you want to see what I've done in more detail here, you can check out the link for my GitHub repository. And aside from that, I'd like to thank you for watching. And if you do like the video, please like it or subscribe. Thanks again, fellow Atarians. Eat your wawa.